So in this video, we're going to be, or in this lecture, we're going to be talking about uh, curved beams and how to determine stresses within curved beams. So, um, so if you ever used a, something like a C clamp or any, um, it would typically have um, this type of loading situation where you'd have the clamping load of a thousand pounds would be applied at both ends of the ends of the section, um, and that applied force um, is going to create stress within the within the beam, um, within the curved section. So if we take a section cut along um, a line AA, um, what we end up getting on our free body diagram is we end up getting So we have our applied force F, all right, and then at our section cut AA, all right, we have our reaction force, all right, so this is our internal reaction force, and then we have our internal reaction moment, right? So our internal reaction moment and our internally applied reaction force, these both occur at the centroid of the section cut AA. All right. So the issue right now is, um, so we can use um, we can use um, statics to determine what sigma Fy is and sigma M is um, to determine Fr and uh, Mr respectively. Um, so. Uh, but we do need to know where the centroid of the section AA is. So to determine the section, the, th the centroid, we need to use the centroid formula. So the centroid formula for a, whatchamacallit, section is going to be um, equal to the sum of all the, uh, the centroids of the areas times the individual area times the sum of all the total areas. So if we look at our section here, okay, we have two areas. We have one area, and then we have, so I'll call this R1 and A1, and then we have a second area here, which I would call R2 and A2. Okay, so R1 is going to be equal to um, needs to be the inner radius, which was given to us as four inches, plus half of this thickness. So plus half of a quarter of an inch, which would be 1.25. Inches. Okay, so R1 would be equal to 4.125 inches. A1 would be equal to the width of the section, which is 1 inch, times the thickness of the section, which would be 0 0.25 inches. Okay, so it would be give us a quarter inch squared for A1. Okay. R2 would be into the centroid of this other section. So this the length of this section is equal to 1.25 inches, so half of 1.25 is 0.625. So we need to add 0.625 plus 0 0.25 plus 4 inches to get our our value for R1. So we would get um, 4.875 for R1. All right, and then the last one is uh, we need to know what A1 is. So A1 would be equal to 1.25 inches times the width, the width of that section, which is equal to 0 0.25 inches. Okay, so uh, that gives us is um, 5 sixteenths, uh, I believe. So, <coughs> so that should be, uh, yeah. So. 
Yeah, so that would be go to 5 over 16 inches to the f squared. Okay, so now we have all of our areas for, sorry, this should be, this shouldn't be R1, this should be R2, oops, and this should be A2. Apologize for the naming convention there. Okay, so now we can plug all those terms into this equation here. All right, so we're just plugging in all of our values for A1 and A2 into this equation uh, to solve for RC. So if we do that um, real quick, we're going to stop the video just to write down all the uh, math real neat. So after you plugged in every all the terms, you should have ended up with a value for the radius to the centroid of our cross section as being equal to 4.54167 inches. Um, all right. So then the last thing we had to do is we just need to evaluate these two equations here. So if we start off with sigma fy and we set it equal to zero, so again we're just looking at this free body diagram that we drew at the top here to create this equation, uh, to evaluate the um, these two um, equations. Okay, so the first one is just sum of all the forces in the y direction are equal to zero. So there's only two forces on that free body diagram. There's our applied force F and our um, reaction force FR. Okay, so FR would just be equal to F, and F was an applied force of a thousand pounds. Okay. Our second equilibrium equation was we had to sum all the moments about the centroid of um, AA. Okay, and set so that equal to zero. So we have the moment due to our applied force. So our applied force is F times RC plus. Um, the moment arm would go from, so if you look at the diagram here, we have RC, and then we also have uh, the addition of an additional inch from where the applied force is located. So we're going to add an inch to RC. Okay, now we'll create a positive moment. And then we have the moment at uh, at AA, so that's our centroid moment, right? our reaction moment. Okay, so our reaction moment is going to be equal to negative F times uh, five point uh, five four one six seven. inches, so F is just equal to a thousand pounds, so if you just plug all that in, we would get minus 5,542 pound inches. Right. So what we're going to do later in the lecture is we're going to show how we can convert, um, so later in the lecture we're going to develop equations that we can convert this moment and this reaction force into uh, into two stress terms. So <clears throat> if we go back to our original problem or the original part of the problem and we look at a small section of our of our beam here. So if we just like a small element here. Okay. In this in this lecture we're going to talk about three different types of stresses. We're going to talk about a tangential stress. Alright which we denote with sigma theta, all right? And, sigma, and then there's also going to be an, so this is due, this can be due to um, bending and an axial stress it can all lead to, combine to give you your total sigma theta. And then the other stress we're gonna talk about is our radial stress. Alright, so, and, all right, so we'll talk about how we can calculate sigma theta and sigma radial 
um, in the rest of the video. And then using sigma theta and sigma radial, you should be able to calculate um, your principal stresses and then you can determine whether or not something would fail uh, for a curved section.